March. Jack Ely. I'm not here to hurt you. Yeah. And L.A. Such a love letter to L.A. Well, kind of a love letter to L.A. It's I like, mean, yeah, you know how did, L.A. Don't... became, you know? This is what it used to be. Now it's like this. And, and remarkably, too. I mean, I don't know how many people remember, but you look at L.A. today, the sky outside is blue. Right. And remarkably, people think, well, I guess it was always... No, it wasn't always that way. Nope. It was terrible when I grew up. So much so in high school that... Um, we had Hell Week on our football practice, and we'd have people keeling over because the air was just not fit to breathe. And there were even sirens, weren't there? Air raid sirens, yep. sort of. They'd say, eh, eh, it was time to take the kids inside because they'd get sick if they stayed, you know? In the valley, for <clears throat> sure. Oh, the valley's murdered. So you would fly into L.A., and there'd be a crust of smog. It was like entering a souffle through the top, you know? I felt that this kind of a backdrop would be very effective for a detective story. Uh, because it's a compromise city. It's still this American dream. It's still the pursuing end game to, you know, all these people looking to find glamour. Yep. But the glamour was kind of faded in the 70s. It had kind of dropped its luster. And there's sort of a dime store kind of chic that posed and postured as that kind of Hollywood that we were remembering. Yep. This compromise sort of Sodom, modern day, latter day Sodom, Sodom and Gomorrah was where we put our story. Uh, it's a great, great movie.